Our Bible reading today is from James, chapter 2, reading verses 1 to 13. My brothers and sisters, believers in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ should not show favouritism. Suppose a man comes into your meeting wearing a gold ring and fine clothes, and the poor man in filthy old clothes also comes in. If you show special attention to the man wearing fine clothes and say, Here's a good seat for you, but say to the poor man, you stand there or sit on the floor by my feet. Have you not discriminated amongst yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my dear brothers and sisters, has not God God chosen those who are poor in the eyes of the world to be rich in faith and to inherit the kingdom he promised those who love him? But you have dishonoured the poor. Is it not the rich who are exploiting you? Are they not the ones who are dragging you into court? Are they not the ones who are blaspheming the noble name of him to whom you belong? If you really keep the royal law found in scripture, love your neighbour as yourself, you are doing right. But if you show favouritism, you sin and are convicted by the law as lawbreakers. For whoever keeps the whole law and yet stumbles at just one point, is guilty of breaking all of it. For he who said, you shall not commit adultery, also said, you shall not murder. If you do not commit adultery, but do commit murder, you have become a lawbreaker. Speak and act as those who are going to be judged by the law that gives freedom, because judgment without mercy will be shown to anyone who has not been merciful. Mercy triumphs over judgment. I wonder what's your favourite colour? Is it red or is it blue? What's your favourite flavour of ice cream? Is it vanilla or is it chocolate? What's your favourite garden flower? Is that a rose or is it foxgloves? What's your favourite morning cuppa? Do you like a cup of tea or a mug of coffee? We all have favourites and have you ever stopped to think why we have favourites. Maybe it's something that's been passed on throughout your family. There are some things that are more pleasing to our five senses than there are to others. And we have good and bad memories about things. It's fine to have a favourite colour, a favourite flavour of ice cream, a favourite meal, a garden flower, or a morning cuppa. But what happens when we start to have favourite people or a favourite group of people, it's not long before we start to show favouritism. Our Bible reading from James chapter 2 says in verse 1, My brothers and sisters, believers in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ must not show favouritism. Well, that seems very clear, doesn't it? James then starts off with an example, an illustration from church life. He says, suppose, suppose a man comes into your meeting wearing a gold ring and fine clothes and the poor man in filthy old clothes also comes in. If you show special attention to the man wearing fine clothes and say, here's a good seat for you, but say to the poor man, you sit there or sit on the floor by my feet. Have you not discriminated amongst yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Of course, we might say that's all ridiculous and we wouldn't do that to the visitors to our church, would we? Or would we? If we show favouritism to one person or a particular group of people, then what does that say about our attitude to the others, to those we are not showing favouritism to? I wonder, what other words might we use for favouritism? Well, we might use the words such as discrimination prejudice, bias. And if we look in the news, then there are many examples of discrimination that we see around us day by day. And if we think about our own attitudes, maybe we can identify with some of those as well. We're perhaps familiar with those common causes of discrimination, such as race or religion, gender or sexual orientation. Refugees, immigrants, asylum seekers, maybe people's appearance, too fat or too thin, pretty or ugly, 
those who've had plastic surgery, those who have lots of tattoos. What about smokers, drug addicts, alcoholics, those with self-induced diseases? Maybe Southerners or Northerners. Maybe our church denomination, charismatics, liberals, churchmanship. And then what about women drivers, young male drivers, elderly drivers, white van drivers, people with caravans. In fact, anyone who is different from me. Let's look at what the Bible has to say about all of this. First of all, let's think about Jacob, who demonstrates what happens when you show favoritism. Jacob and Esau in the Old Testament were the much prayed for and waited for twin sons of Isaac and Rebekah. They were not identical twins. Esau was born first, and we read that he came out red and his whole body like a hairy garment. And Jacob came out second, grabbing his brother's heel. Esau was clearly his father's favourite, particularly as he grew up and became a hunter. And we read that his father had a taste for wild game. Jacob, on the other hand, was a bit of a mummy's boy and was content to stay at home amongst the tents. But Jacob was also a schemer and he contrived to get the firstborn birthright from his brother, as well as his father's blessing when his father died, and all the privileges that that bought. And not surprisingly, Esau held a grudge against his brother, and it was many years before Jacob and Esau were reconciled. We might say that this was not a great preparation for Jacob becoming a father himself. Jacob, it appears, had no problems actually becoming a father, as he had 12 sons, but his parenting skills weren't great and the family problems are summed up in Genesis chapter 37 verses 3 to 4 where we read, Now Israel, which is the new name that God gave to Jacob, loved Joseph more than any of his other sons because he had been born to him in his old age and he made an ornate robe for him. When his brothers saw that their father loved him, more than any of them, they hated him and could not speak a kind word to him. Joseph, as a young man, seemed to make the most of this, which only served to inflame the situation. And we read how some of his brothers wanted to kill him, but they came to a compromise and instead sold him for 20 shekels of silver to some passing Ishmaelite traders who sold him into slavery in Egypt. The rest, of course, is history. But Jacob, we read, was distraught and couldn't be comforted as he thought his son had died. The story of Jacob and his family shows that favouritism caused long-term harm to everyone involved. Whether that was the person being shown favouritism to, that is Joseph, the person being excluded because of favouritism being shown to the other, which was the rest of Joseph's brothers, or the person showing favouritism, which was Jacob. And that's a lesson for us today too, that we should not show favouritism. Secondly, let's look to the example of Jesus, who shows us what happens when you treat people equally. Now, we all know that Jesus had 12 disciples, but can we name them all? Well, we can probably manage Simon, Peter and Andrew, James and John, Philip and Bartholomew, who was also called Nathaniel. We probably also recall Thomas and Matthew, and of course Judas Iscariot. But what about the others? James, son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, or Judas, son of James, and Simon the Zealot. And I wonder why are some easier to remember than others? Well, I suspect some of them we read about more in the Bible. Some just get a one-line mention. Others occur frequently. And as we think about that, then perhaps ask the question, did Jesus have a favourite disciple? Phil Knox, in his book, The Best of Friends, writes about Jesus having a best friend, John. And in a circle of Peter, James and John, 
and the huddle of the 12 disciples. And maybe we can identify a similar pattern with our own friendship groups, that we have a best friend, maybe an inner circle of those who are particularly close, and then a, a wider huddle. Because none of us has the emotional energy all the time to have 12 best friends. So whilst John might be considered the closest friend of Jesus, that doesn't mean that Jesus showed favoritism to him at the expense of the others. Remember in Mark chapter 10, where James and John came to Jesus with a special request that they should sit at the side of Jesus when he went to glory or, or when he went to heaven. The other disciples, when they heard about it, were indignant. So if Jesus had shown favoritism, then he might have said yes to their request, but he didn't. And he reminded them that if they wanted to become great, then they would have to serve one another. So let me take you to uh, another story in the life of Jesus to show how he treated his disciples equally. In John chapter 13, Jesus was having an evening meal with all 12 of his disciples. We know it as the Last Supper. Jesus took his disciples by surprise when he suddenly took his outer garment off and proceeded to wash the feet of his disciples as an illustration of his servant-hearted love for them that would be fully manifested by his death on the cross. In the Bible passage, there are only two disciples who are mentioned by name in that chapter. Judas Iscariot, who the devil had already prompted to betray Jesus, and Simon Peter, who wavered between not having his feet washed at all and having a full shower. The rest of the disciples were either too dumbfounded to speak or were willing to have their feet washed by Jesus. They had perhaps become used to being surprised by what Jesus did and said. But the important thing here is that Jesus treated them all equally and did not show favoritism to any of them, including Judas, who Jesus knew was shortly going to betray him. What an example. I wonder what might we have done in that same situation? And when we read the early chapters of the Acts of the Apostles, then we read how the disciples remained together praying and waiting as Jesus had commanded. And from church history, we find that they were instrumental in the setting up and growth of the early church. Which leads us on to thirdly, you and me. What are we going to do in response to these Bible passages? We know that the world favours those who are rich and successful, whereas the kingdom of God welcomes the poor and the weak and the helpless. Remember the Sermon on the Mount. We struggle to find the word favourite in the Bible, with the exception of a couple of obscure Old Testament references in the individual translations of the Bible. If we go the way of the world and show favouritism, then James describes three consequences in this passage. Firstly, then we discriminate and we become judges with evil thoughts. Secondly, we go away and we go against God's way, forgetting that we are actually being exploited by the rich who take God's name in vain and disregard him. Now, that's a generalisation, but James uh, and the church he wrote to knew what he was saying. And thirdly, God says it's wrong. And if we show favouritism, then that is a sin, just like murder and adultery. The answer to what we are to do comes in verse 8, where James writes, If you really keep the royal law found in Scripture, love your neighbour as yourself, then you are doing right. We should follow the example of Jesus, not the example of Jacob. God treats us all the same. And there's nothing we can do to make God love us any more or any less. We read in Romans chapter 2, verse 11, for God does not show favoritism. And in the first letter of John chapter 3, see what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God. 
So who do I show discrimination towards? Who do you show discrimination towards? It may be an individual or it may be a people group. So I'd like you and me to do something today. I don't know who you discriminate against, but you know and God knows. Let's have a moment of silence to consider that and to ask God for his forgiveness and for his help in loving that person, loving that people group this week and be determined to do something to show that love in a practical way so that they may see God's love in you. So let's just be quiet for a few moments. May we treat all we come into contact with day by day the same and not show favouritism or discrimination. It's not always easy, but as we realise just how much God loves us, then as we are filled with God's love, then we should show that same love to others, irrespective of who they are. We are commanded to love our neighbours as ourselves. Let's do that this week. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this reminder from the letter of James that we are not to show favouritism and that we are to love our neighbours as ourselves. Heavenly Father, would you please forgive us for those times where we do show favouritism, for those individuals or those groups of people that we discriminate against. Lord Jesus, would you please show us uh, where we need to change. Would you please show us who we do discriminate against? And we pray that you would help us by your Holy Spirit to love them. And would you please show us ways in which we can love our neighbour as ourselves this week? In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless. Mm -hmm.